One is known for his creativity in the film and theater, and the other is known for his completely in-tune singing. Now, if you were thinking EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Mike Nichols is a theater director and entertainment critic from upstate New York, and Chris Brown, a podcast host from Alberta, Canada, wants to know when Winnie the Pooh and Scarface came together to create an unbearably bad movie called Cocaine Bear. And why was it an offer the movie studios couldn't refuse? Together, Mike Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as two people who are not the people you are thinking of only can. This is No, Not Them. Michael, how are you? First of all, two things. In tune singing? Well, I don't know. Chris Brown, I'm assuming he is in tune. He's won an award. Second thing, you came real hard for Cocaine Bear, and it was everything I needed it to be. <laughs> Why? Was it good? No. It was horrible. I, I know. It was incredibly fun. No, it wasn't. It was two hours so of me going to my husband going, I want my two hours back. Elizabeth Banks, stick to doing your slapstick comedy of Pitch Perfect. Don't leave that genre ever again. I loved it. When he ripped off Jesse Tyler Ferguson's leg and then did a bump of coke off it, I was like, this is camp. This is Al Pacino and Scarface. I was obsessed. I, I Cocaine Bear is my new religion. Well, if it not gets only nominated am I for... for now, what? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I was going to say I support women's rights, but more importantly, I support women's wrongs. And Cocaine Bear is a mama bear, so I support her rights and her wrongs. Well, Winnie the Pooh wants its freaking genre back because we should not ever make anything about uh, bears ever again. The great last great movie about bears was Bad News Bears, and it wasn't even about a bear. So here nor there. <laughs> Questionable answerable how are you i'm tired it's been a month so if you're listening to this you know that this is not coming out on may 1st as we've pl uh, pledged to make sure that we get an episode out every single first of each month unfortunately did not happen in may and there's a few of the reasons behind that one both michael and i have been incredibly insanely busy with our jobs but two uh for those who have been following the cross-border interviews social media pages comic-con or calgary expo has been going on in our hometown and i was there this week covering it so later on this week uh, uh an exclusive behind the scenes look at calgary expo we have some great interviews with some great uh, voiceover artist and with the people of Calgary Expo looking forward to that so stay tuned to our social media pages because it will be coming out but that's what I've been doing over the last month and a half besides running around to two different provinces and three different communities to try and make sure we continue to make money how are you being <laughs> busy at work and I'm working on an original musical right now which there's a lot more work that goes into something completely brand new than something already constructed that you're just putting on. Cause I've gone, we've gone through about like seven or eight rewrites of the script. The songs change quite frequently. I'll go into rehearsal and it's surprise. We've written a new song that's going into this point. So it's just a lot of changing stress rehearsal and I'm ready to put it up. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be really incredible. Um, I hope we're recording it because uh, I think it's it's going to be really cool to see it. Speaking of musicals and think, speaking about the theater, let's talk about the first big thing that's happened over the last month, and that is the end of the longest running theater production on Broadway. Phantom of the Opera has closed its doors for the last time as of recording this, and the Phantom has taken its last bow. Um, now, you and I have talked about this a little bit earlier, but I want to do a shameless plug here because the very last person who was the Phantom actually came from Calgary, Alberta. I, I don't remember his name right now, so the last person to play the Phantom on Broadway as of today... <laughs> Um, because we know that there's going to be a revival in about six months of a revival of revival. But Michael, for you, what do you think about this uh, now new venture that Broadway's going in, Phantomless? I'm excited. I I'm very much of the belief that no show should run longer than ten years on Broadway, um, just because things get really dated. 
things get like it just doesn't propel it forward. It kind of keeps it stagnant. And with such few theaters on Broadway, when you hold a theater hostage like Phantom did for so long, it really kind of does not allow for anything else to go in. Um, also, you joke about Phantom being back in six months. The big talks is that it will be back because it needs to be at off-Broadway for at least three years before it can be considered Tony eligible again for anything. So the big talks is it's going to wait exactly three years and then open right for the um, Tony Awards uh, in 2026, 2027. And so that's the big T. Also, the Majestic Theater is basically have to go undergo renovations because it hasn't been able to get renovated in 35 years and they've been renovating all the theaters. So if there's even talks that it's gonna go right back into the Majestic and it's gonna be the cheaper version that's on tour. Um, also one, when so that makes, Cinderella- what, what, what makes the newest, uh, what's the longest running show on Broadway now, now that Phantom's left? Lion King. No, Chicago, Chicago. Okay. And they, they've done what Phantom's about to do, right? Leave for a few years and then come back and revive it? Or has it just been a staple of No, Broadway? it's been there since 96. Um, they put Chicago, it started out as an Encores production, which Encores takes shows that haven't been on Broadway and haven't been revived in a while and does a concert style of them. So this is that version that transferred to Broadway and it's just been running and they throw in people like James Monsoon or Nene Leakes or Pamela Anderson or um, uh, Angelica Ross, they just will throw in random like celebrities and say, here you go, you can be in Broadway. Um, Cause it works. Cause it's a, it's a show that you can cast people in, in leading roles that don't necessarily need to have a lot of talent and it sells. Um, it's also, it costs almost no money to put up cause it's musicians, chairs <laughs> and like leotards and that's it. Sounds um, like Wicked's a fun time at there. a gay pride party. Uh, Wicked's up there. Lion King's up there. The top four, long, five longest running shows have been Phantom, Cats, Wicked, Lion King, and uh, Chicago. Okay. Speaking but of Wicked, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just, just going to say that uh, – when Bad Cinderella inevitably closes because it's hemorrhaging money, it'll be the first time in almost like 40, 45 years that Weber has not had a show on Broadway. Speaking of that, for those who are listening to this right now and who are looking for some reviews to potentially or some suggestions to go to Broadway, please remember that The Lights of Broadway with Michael Nichols paid his written reviews that are on the Cross Border Interview website are up. And he recently, over the last month, did take in two shows. I did just mention one there, Bad Cinderella. And the other one, and I'm not 100% sure, I think it's called Cucked or Bucked? Shut. Oh, okay. Shut. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Shut. I don't know. I I, re I totally read them before I post them up. Uh, um, I'm so hollering. You, you went to see Cucked. I'm shocked. Um, you went to go see <laughs> Shocked on Broadway. How was it? I had so much fun. It was not like life changing, but like it was a good time. Like in terms of fun, five out of five. In terms of like actual technical, like getting down to the nitty gritty, there's a lot more to talk about there. Um, but it was just fun. Bad Cinderella was bad. Awful. Not even it was bad. awful. Wow. Strong word for it you. I think you I think you gave it a one, didn't you? One and a half. You're trying to please Andrew Ward Lloyd Webber just in case you audition. No, I don't give a <laughs> fuck about her. I'm trying to. The, the only, I mean, there was some aspects that really saved it, but not enough. Like it would have, it, it could have gotten lower if Carolee Carmelo and Grace McLean weren't the roles that they were. And they didn't have big roles, did they? Um, well, uh, Carolee Carmelo was the stepmother and Grace McLean was the queen. They had pretty large roles. They were the villains. Okay. Really? 
I to- again totally read it. Hi, but anyway, you should check them out. They are on the cross border interviews. Just search Lights of Broadway and all his reviews from 2022 and now 2023 are up there. And from what I understand, I'm not sure if I can spoil this or not, but uh, you're going to be heading back to Broadway here soon to go get taken some more. So be sure to keep up on our website. Uh, check us out. If you want to help out and make sure that Michael can continue to continue to go see these great productions and review them for you. So that way you don't have to spend your hard earned money back the show. Uh, There's a link to our Patreon account and you can back us and all that money does go to Michael to help him go see these shows. So that way he can review them. So highly recommend you do that. Um, Speaking of Broadway, let's transition from Broadway musicals to Broadway's turn to movies. Uh, Wicked. Unfortunately, there have been some leaks, as expected. With any movie, there's always leaks. And from what I understand, Ariana Grande has been accused of lip syncing during her Wicked time on this movie set. And it's not actually her. It's, is it Kristen Chenoweth who she's playing? So, yes, it's people are. Yeah, people are accusing her of lip syncing, but let me tell you, that was my uh, pers- w- the Wicked soundtrack was my personality for a while, and I can tell you for a fact that that voice is Ariana Grande's. It is not Kristen Chenoweth's. The timbre, the tone, the diction, the verb verbiage formation, all her. We also have gotten some leaks of Cynthia Erivo singing Defying Gravity. And when I tell you, I almost threw my goddamn shoe out my brand new, very expensive window. I I have never, I'm I'm so excited for this goddamn movie. So like people know Ariana Grande and people are like, oh, she's going to be great. Y'all don't know Cynthia. I have never wanted to throw my shoe at somebody on a Broadway stage before until I heard Cynthia Erivo in The Color Purple and watched her sing, I'm here. I was ready. Um, is there word, is there speculation that a certain former late night host is about to be part of that show as well? I don't know. I, I feel like maybe, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I feel like everyone's kind of jumped the ship on that. I don't know why they haven't released the, the, the goat yet on who's the goat, but we will see. It's, it's a small role that eventually ends up the goat doesn't talk, so it might be a good thing. What? You're going, you're going for shade today. What is, like, are we on, like, are we, like, out of whack right now? Like, it seems like shade. Usually, usually you one like of to us talk shit about James Corden. Pot calling the kettle black on that one. I say I also like to talk shit about James Corden. Um, we we have uh, this new two part movie of Wicked coming out. Um, mm. can anyone? So Christian Chenoweth and I, uh, I am going to pronounce it just the way that John Travolta did uh, at the Oscars. Idina Menzies, whatever her name is. Um, Mendeley <laughs> or Rachel Berry's mother in Glee or that person who sings Defying Gravity. Um, they're the staples, right? They're the ones that people look to and go, if you don't do it as good as these two, you're not going to win us over. Should people just not come into this type of movie situation where the songs are so iconic already by the original uh, singers that People need to say, okay, park your horses, get off of them, and then go into the movie theaters and expect to see something different than what you would see on Broadway or even here I mean, on Adina, Broadway. I mean, Adina Menzel can't sing, so um, she fucked her voice up singing this role. This specific role ruined her voice, and you can hear it at the Tony Award performance. It's rough. She's taking a lot of very vocal, loud breaths like between every word, like this ruined her voice. And she's very blessed that auto-tune exists so that she can have a go around with Frozen. Um, and I said what I said. Uh, that's the thing. So many Broadway people at this point, because Wicked's been on for so long, 
we're all like Idina Menzel and Kristen are fine, but like there are some there have been some much better alphabas that have kind of rolled out. I think people are very used to the Glinda with Didn't Kristen. Did Megan like, Tilly we, play something? Megan Hilty. She played Tilly Hilty. She's she's really good. Um, but for Alphabet's Jessica Vosk is one that people really look at. Sashana Beans, one that people really like as well. Um, there's been so many different Alphabet's now that have taken over that just kind of have done their own thing and made the role their own and have really fucking murdered that track more than Idina did. Um, so like, I, I don't know. I think if you're going in and you only are really familiar with the soundtrack, go in expecting to kind of be really wowed because like Idina was fine. She won the Tony. She, she got nodes on her voice and, and went way of Julie Andrews, unfortunately. Um, but like, it, 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 she just, she did the role whereas other people kind of perfected the role, which usually happens when you replace somebody. You want to go in, sort of do what they did, but kind of make it your own and, and find better ways to tell the story understandable i want to switch gears a little bit here um i i, I want to know michael have you heard the news have i heard the news have you heard the news uh that alec baldwin is shooting a new movie hopefully this time he misses <sighs> that's a bad joke we're gonna get we're gonna get negative reviews because of that one star <laughs> Someone told me that this weekend at the Calgary Expo, and I was like, I need to use this. Wait, is he actually shooting another movie though? He's shooting. He's continuing shooting Rust. Oh fucking why? Let it go. Uh, speaking of Elba and what's so, her name, let it go. So for the uh, for those who don't know, uh, Alec Baldwin was uh, charged with uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter for a uh, uh, an accidentally uh, an, a an accidental firing of a prop gun that was loaded with an actual bullet on his movie set of Rust in New Mexico earlier in 2000 I want to say 2021 potentially yeah. in 2020 and he was going through the court systems and then earlier this month it was announced that the charges were dropped and all charges were dropped for him um <laughs> Not shocked, to be honest. No. Not surprised, to be honest, because he's been making the rounds on social medias recently to try to uh, shore up his uh, PR campaign to get him back in the limelight and get him back on the movie sets. But, Michael, I'm going to pose a question for you. Um, when something like this happens, it does take a toll on someone's men mental capacity he's going to be a different person from now on, isn't he? Even, even if the charges weren't dropped, he's still going to be a different person. He's literally killed somebody. Yeah. It's hard. Isn't he it? actually, he actually fired it, right? Yeah. He's the one who actually, yeah. he, it was in his hand when it was fired. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna change you. Hopefully he goes to therapy. I mean, I don't think continuing this film is the right move. I don't think him continuing performing period is the right move, but I mean, Hey, people do what people want to do and it is what it is. It certainly is. And while the charges for Alec Baldwin were dropped, our next person I want to talk about is causing some headaches for the house of the mouse causing a massive pain in the sides for Disney and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Last episode, we talked about Jonathan Major and how he was being accused of domestic assault against his then girlfriend. And since then, since our last episode in April, he has been dropped by his PR company, by his management, and things are looking worse and worse. Um, Disney and Marvel have both sort of put a lot of eggs in this basket of Jonathan Majors of uh, the Kang dynasty, the uh, multiverse uh, storyline that Marvel's going through right now when he was going to be at the center of it as the next main villain. Now, you and I talked off the record a while back about this, probably about two days after it was announced that they were dropped. He was dropped from his PR firm. Um, 
this isn't the first time that Marvel's had to make some make some tough decisions with some actors who have said some inappropriate things or some things that may or done things that may not have been in the best light for the mouse. What what should Disney do here, and where is the where what's the next steps that Marvel has to take to make sure that something like this doesn't happen with someone that they're going to hire for say Fantastic Four or an, the X Men that they're going to be shooting here? Um, I mean. Listen, what Marvel should do is drop him. What Marvel cannot do is drop him because they didn't jo- drop Josh Brolin when the same allegations came forward. Like, Marvel cannot drop him now because they already were like, yeah, no, it's fine if it's Josh, but it's not fine if it's Jonathan Majors. Like, oops, you made it like, you made your bed. You're going to have to lie in it now. And like, what the, that's what they should do they really should just drop him but they cannot because they've already basically said if you do that you can still have a multi multi-movie villain arc yeah. i mean but it's also the easiest to drop him because like you could just bring in some other random person be like this is kang from like a different universe or whatever and like it would work no it wouldn't I think it'd be fine. Well, for the have you seen Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp? Yeah, Kong and Radio? I think it would still be fine. Okay, uh, understandable. They did well because you just say it's... at the same time they did change Terrence Howard's uh, uh, character in the first Iron Man to uh, uh, Don Cheadle's car- uh, Warhammer. So there is that ability to change them. And for God's sakes, every single movie it seems like Ant Man has a new daughter, even though it's the same freaking. Uh, character, it's just m- different actors every single time, and I I know it gives me whiplash. I started watching, I was like, What movie are we watching right now? And then I was like, Oh, this is Cassie, Mother Trucker. Okay, because you can't just keep things separate. No, it's so easy to just replace him because you just literally have to pull some bullshit of like, Oh, this is Kang from a different universe in the multiverse, and then it's like, Okay, there's like or 18 just, different logos that all look different. Or just don't even it, say anything. Like they did with Terrence Howard and Don Sheedle. No, I feel like with this, they would have to say something just because like when he introduces himself as Kang, you then could have, what's his name? Be like, no, Kang was someone else. Like, oh no, I'm Kang from this other universe. Like they could fully play it up like that. I mean, there's like 80, 18 million different Lokis that all look 100% different. Yeah. Same with and- the Spider-Man. So it, there's already precedent that it doesn't need to look identical. And at the same time, uh, Thanos did change during the movies as well. His first appearance in the original Avengers to what he looked like when Josh Brolin took the character over, completely different. So there is precedent that it can change and it can be a different actor. Yet again, Thanos is a little bit different because he's a purple guy where Jonathan Majors is the character, right? It's the actual actor. It's not heavily CGI or makeup in some senses. But I I suspect that this is not going to be the last time the mouse is going to have some tr- troubles with actors in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because actors get into trouble. They're not infallible. And I think we all understand that. It's just, well, look, even Wakanda Forever, the Black Panther movie, right? The main character in that, the woman who played uh, the new Black Panther, and I forget her name right now. I, it's not come to Letitia, my name. right? There you go. She was very anti-vax during the vaccination. And there was conversations that how do we do this? Because Chadwick has just died. We can't fire her because we need to kind of do something here. So it was a very hard time for the mess, but they did get through it. She apologized, so on and so forth. Ezra Miller, DC's uh, The Flash. Um, They are going through this whole trouble right now. And even James Gunn, the new sort of creative director behind the DC world, is saying, we're going to wait to see how Ezra Miller comes through their journey of sort of healing and self-reflection. Uh, re- re- and the whole time I'm thinking, okay, at what point in time, like, what do you have to do to get fired by Disney and DC these days? Because it seems like if you can kidnap someone, hold them in a cult and still get a big, massive paycheck, then Jesus sign me up. Apparently be Henry Cavill. (laughs) So you have to be in 
geek. So you have to be a nerd or uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Or just Batwoman. Or a black woman? Or Batwoman. Oh, I think they said or a black woman. I was like... I mean, technically Batwoman was a Latina woman. And so, I mean, apparently be a person of color and unless you're The Rock and they'll fire you. Amen. So, I don't know much about this next character. I've read his, I, I read a story about him, and I still don't know who, why he's famous. But can you tell me who the fuck Drake Bell is, and why is it important that he has gone mysteriously missing and then come back and then getting divorced by his wife? I can tell you in great detail. Okay, you have 10 minutes, go. My voice is hoarse from this five. weekend. Okay, perfect. I'll give you five. Um, so Drake Bell, he is Nickelodeon childhood star of famed television program, Drake and Josh. And he fully, like, once the show went off air and got canceled, everyone was like, oh my God, they're all friends. They all fucking hated him. He also got accused of grooming and of Reddit preying on children sexually and acting on it. And he pled guilty to it. And like, he every once in a while pops up on the internet and makes this whole big stink and this drama over his former co-stars and like them not wanting anything to do with him. The last time I think was when his co-star got um, married and everyone from the show was invited except for Drake Bell. And so Drake Bell recently went missing and nobody knew where he was for hours and they finally found him and he was like, oh, I just left my phone in my car and you all freaked out. Like it was days, but by all means, dude, try and play it off like it wasn't. And then a week later, his wife filed for divorce. And that's kind of what we know of at the moment, but like he is a not well person. Like to the point of potentially people stepping in and becoming um, sort of what Britney Spears and Amanda Bynes had. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Not in this, not in this day and age. That's a hot, hot issue. Um, no, one, no one's going to do conservatorships in these for celebrities these days because the fans will lose their minds. Um, Does I, he I think have he's fans? Just, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's even really thought about him until he kind of goes off rails. Like, like it's literally like it's cyclical every three or four years, something happens and, and people are like, Oh shit, we should be worried about Drake Bell. And then it kind of vanishes again. Okay. So this is the non story then. I, I mean, it's a story. It's a someone going missing and then, and then the divorce and like, he just, he needs help and he needs actual help. And it's, they're never going to conservatorship. And I don't think it's at that level yet. As this is again, looking on the outside in, it could be, but like, he just needs actual help. And I don't think he's willing to get it at this point. My last sort of celebrity news I want to talk about before moving into the world of music here for a few minutes. You are... Uh, of a younger generation than I am. <laughs> I, sorry, you are the same generation that I am. You That's have gray, right. you have gray hair. You are old. Oh, don't look at it. Do you actually have gray hair? I have, I'm graying I, a lot. And the longer it gets, the more I can see them. And I'm like, I just want to shave my head bald again. Vanity, thy name is Michael Nichols Page. Sure the fuck is. Um, but you know the TikTok. You know the celebrities who are these influencers. Oh, oh, it's a funny story. So I was at Calgary Expo this weekend. Where we'll get back to the main story here in about two seconds. I want to tell you this too, because I want to get your reaction. What so is I was at Calgary. Like? Oh, it's it's so much fun. So you know me and how much I despise social media influencers, right? The people who are like, oh, I have 19,000 followers. Was that just a chicken gobbling? Oh no, that's a dog. All I heard was like a turkey gobble. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Old McDonald had a farm, I guess. 
Sorry about that. Jesus Christ. Old McDonald has a farm, I guess. Okay. I want to explain this story to you and tell you tell tell me if I was being rude because I told my husband and he said I was being an ass, like a royal ass. So I was at the Calgary Expo and there was a there was a social media influencer there. And I don't understand this whole concept of social media influences. And this is what's going to get us into what our next story is, right? So the person comes over to me and says, oh, my God, it's been a long time since I've seen you. And I'm going, I, kn- I know who you are. I don't want to give you the time or day to even talk to you about this, but I'm going to throw you a bone. I said, I- I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Like, uh, do we know each other? Knowing I know them, right? I, I knew who the person was, but... You want to see someone's face go from A to B, Z within like two seconds. Tell a social media influencer you have no idea who the fuck they are because their whole identity then collapses around them because they then proceeded to try to tell me how I knew them. Oh, you're married to Ricardo Miranda. And I go, yes, well, that's in the news. So I'm assuming you would know that. Like I, I'm saying this in my head. And she goes, we we met once and I'm saying, I, I, I honestly don't remember. I apologize. Like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I just, I don't remember meeting you and I don't know who you are. Like, do you work with someone I know? Do you know someone I know? Like, be, my husband knows a lot of people. And he kept on trying to be my friend. And he kept on trying to tell me I should know who he is because of his social media presence. And I kept on basically making him feel more insignificant than I have ever made someone feel in my life. And I have never felt more empowered than I did at that moment. Because at that so moment, you I- gaslit this poor person. That's yes. an asshole, but I don't know you. Meanwhile, you do know them. Yes. Yes. I don't care. My whole issue with social media are people like them. People who think that they're so above the fray, above what everyone else is going through, that we have to bow down and know exactly who you are because you have 10,000 followers on Twitter or a million followers on Instagram. I don't know who this next story is about. You're literally going to have to explain it to me because I could not care two shits because I don't think celebritism is even a thing in social media, but we have made it out to be. Oh, okay. You're I'm on like a get, whole moment right now. I'm gonna She's get on a soapbox, ang- y'all. I'm going to get angry, angry emails sent to me. I feel yeah, it. That was a little gaslighty. That right was a little now. gaslighty. I'm going to say this to the people who are listening to me and who vehemently disagree with me. Stop listening. I'm not forcing you to listen to this. I'm not forcing you to watch this. You can turn this off and you can go do something else. But please if you read are, the lights of Broadway reviews. If you are putting me above people in actual heroic positions, like police officers, like firefighters, ambulances, um, nurses, doctors, then there is an issue with our society where we believe that Social media influencers should have more gravitas than the doctor who is curing fucking cancer. So if a doctor walks up to me and says, I have, I'm a fucking oncologist, I'm going to bow down and fucking kiss that man's or woman's feet. But what I'm not going to do is bow down and kiss someone's feet because they have fucking 20,000 followers, which I guarantee they probably paid for the majority of them. I feel like we need to do a grounding exercise right now. How are you? Also, like, listen, the the whole, like, you totally gaslit that poor person, so they felt like they had to justify. Why? Why? Why do they have to justify? Well, you, because, because they, they literally... Because they, they... Go ahead. Because they did know you, and you did know them, and you openly knew them. Or did I you did not, not know in the moment and then you know I didn't after? Know, I knew once they started talking to me about who they were, about how I should know them through Ricardo. I didn't know who they were when they first approached me, but they they assumed that I did. 
Okay, so they, I mean, listen, you meet people, Some the number of people that come up to me in the theater world, they're like, I know you, we did this, whatever, like, okay. And then they start explaining, it's like, oh, now I know who you are, hi. Okay, okay, we're on a bad path here, but I need to- We're on I a to... journey. Okay, I mean, listen. I don't understand TikTok. I know we're about to talk about TikTok and Bud Light here in about 10 seconds, but I want to get this out. While I was at Comic-Con or Calgary Expo, I want to make sure I say that right because I'm going back next year and I want to make sure I get my tickets correctly. Um, when I was at Calgary Expo, the TikTok wannabe stars all were doing their little freaking dances and their little freaking short videos that literally 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 caused massive lineups because we had to stop in the middle of the freaking walkway and do their little eh, 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 eh. it's giving very much stay off my yard i'm already that person in my neighborhood so i'm okay i know it's giving it's giving stay off my yard you children all right, there's my rant for the day. Welcome to my TED Talk. We'll be back in a Wild. month. <laughs> Wild. But can you tell me who... Uh, Dylan who, Mulvaney is? Yeah, Dylan Mulvaney is, because I don't know who they are. And it sounds like from all the country music stars that I listen to, I should despise this person. Problematic. Um... Yeah, no, Dylan Mulvaney, she is a trans activist that kind of got started on TikTok, just documenting very visibly and very openly her transition. She called it insert day of girlhood. And so like X number of days of being a girl, like, and so she just kind of documented her transition from day one to whatever day it's at now. Um, and it was just to show and be very visible as a trans person going yeah. through a transition to show that like, this is what it looks like. And there's days that like, yeah, there's days that I'm going to have like stubble and facial hair and I don't like it, but like, I'm going to be open about it so that we're not just seeing uh, the fully transitioned <laughs> folks. Like not everyone can get the Caitlyn Jenner money and can go fully transition and then make the appearance completely fully transition. And some people don't transition as much as Caitlyn Jenner did. And so it's, it's one of those that she just kind of started openly talking about her transition and her journey. And so because she's not she an got influencer, she's a trans activist. Well, she's also an influencer. I mean, she's got influence. She's got a platform. She's got, I mean, influ the, the whole idea of influencer is no different than celebrity. I mean, it, she's a person with a platform. She also was on Broadway for a time um, before transitioning. Like the, she, she has a platform and she uses it to spread trans awareness. Um, technically, she is an influencer and she then got a sponsorship with Bud Light and she's partnering with them. And God, you would have thought hell froze over because Bud Light put a trans woman's face on a package of Bud Light specifically for her. It's not even all Bud Light. They're just partnering with her. They just sent her her own personalized like six pack with her face on it as like a welcome to our sponsorship team. And the the all these folks lost their goddamn minds and go on. Okay. How do I say this? How do I say this without being going on a massive rant about influencers again? Hearing what you just said, I'm sitting here going, okay, that seems reasonable. Like if it was for every single Bud Light can, I'd I'd see an issue. But also why? Because we are in the world right now where we are taking people's faces down. We are putting celebritism and change makers off things. So why would we start putting people back on things? I'm confused.
like the Bud Light can, it's just a blue can, and they yep. they do every year the, the Pride flag for Pride. Yep. They do it every yep. single no, year. And I'm I know that. Yeah, I know that. But we are, and I'm just trying. I I, I want to make sure I, I get this right because I don't want to sound like an inconsiderate asshole, which I know I'm about to. And you can send your messages to crossborderphotography at gmail dot com if you want. Um, we removed uh, images of Uncle Ben off of. Uh, the rice minute mate minute rice we've removed that's apples and oranges no it's not i don't think it is yes though. it is it's this is this is apples and oranges like this is images of so would you be Jim okay Crow and would segregation you, would you be okay then so would you be okay if caitlin jenner was on a, a bottle of something would you be okay with Donald Trump's face uh, being plastered all over uh, Facebook or Instagram? Like the face of Facebook is now uh, the face of Donald Facebook Trump. already is Donald Trump. But if his photo was on the main landing page or the the app icon was Donald Trump's face, would you be okay with? Uh, I'm trying to think uh, what's I'm I'm literally I can literally picture his face right now, but I I think his name's Ben Shapiro. I think I could be They're, wrong here. This is the thing. Their face is already on things. I don't support those. And I don't but I don't have but to what make if all it was, these videos. What if it was something you supported? I would well, I, I think the reaction from the right is fucking stupid and horrible. That's, this is the issue. The reaction is the reaction is unnecessary. You just don't support it. But like, no. also then, are you actively looking at what you're drinking? Because everyone's like, oh, well, Budweiser, I'm still going to drink. And all Corona, I'm still, it's still all owned by the same company. Bud Light has been for years moving towards the LGBTQ plus community, which is why they have campaigns for pride on Bud Light and not Budweiser. Like, this is this is the direction it's been moving. People that are just kind of showing up late to the memo because we put a trans person on a can. Like, and that's the thing. If they want to put it on just for pride, fine. Be my guest. Like, if they want to do it year round, fine. Be my guest. Like, I don't have to necessarily support something that has Donald Trump's face on it. But I also don't have to go and lambast it all over social media. There's plenty of organizations, groups, foods, things like that that I don't support that you don't see me bitching about so publicly. And like crying boohoo, woe is me tears over it. I just don't support them. And it's like with removing Ben, uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima, those were images directly associated with harm done to the black community, which is why they were. OK, OK, but I'm going to challenge you on that, too, because there's a subsection of the trans community who have transitioned, who are now saying they have harmed their bodies because they transitioned. Now, you cannot deny that there is a small minority of people out there who say that the transition that they had to go, they went through what they were not in the right mind doing it. And they did transition. And I'm not playing apples and oranges here, and I'm trying not to. And I feel like we're getting into a political debate and we're supposed to be talking about entertainment. And this will be my last word and then I'll throw it to you. How do, what is harm? In in your context, what is harm? Is it harm? Is it harm to say the the image of something is harmful to somebody? Or is it the image and the meaning behind an image being harmful to somebody? So I think neither of us are trans. And so us defining specifically that piece that you just brought up is entirely inappropriate for me to even try to do because I'm not a trans person. But I'm not talking um, about that though. I'm not talking I know, about no, 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 trans. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just I don't so want the with, I don't want the hate mail. So I just want to make sure to that I'm like saying the, in general. Well this is the thing the black community as a majority expressed that those were images doing harm. A couple of outliers to the trans community, it's and it's not the majority coming forward and saying this is it's it's a conversation that's being had, but also putting of the face of someone who does not regret, does not view it as harm, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community saying, "I want to be celebrated for being trans." It's it, like that is what we're doing. We're celebrating someone who's being trans. We're not 
we're not saying by her being on there, it's now going to force ch like children to transition. That's not what's being said. Children should not be drinking beer, period. So they're not going to. We're normalizing being transgender. I was given, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, would like to shut me up while I was teething. But like, I just, it's, and that's why I feel it's apples and oranges here. I feel like it's the right throwing a hissy fit because they don't want transgender people anywhere, just like they do every single pride when rainbows show up everywhere. And it's also, you can get into the whole capitalistic view of rainbow washing during pride um, that it goes on. And, and that is a whole separate dragon, but. Understandable. We 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 battle from time to time, eh? I was told that recently that you and I seem to be hating each other more and more since we started this one once a month conversation. No, no, hey, I just. Oh, just I, 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 I don't think I. I think we. I think we are both ingrained in our camps, and I think that you and I are willing to debate these issues like two rational people should, instead of making a whole video where you're taking a beer can that you just bought and then smashing it with a uh, a baseball like bat. Like, it's just yeah. stupid. They still got your money, dumbass. Yeah. But at the same time, and this is what this is my last, this, this is my last point before we turn to our last segment here. Um, Bud Light's in the news now. Give it about six months. Give it like... Remember when Nike July was the big... First. Well, that's what I mean. Remember when Nike was the big thing and we were all going to boycott Nike, but now everything's okay with Nike? Boycotts don't work as a whole because the general population just can't keep up with it. Well, they I'm like what sure. they like, they do what they do, and they stick with it. So they'll go and they'll maybe see like, because right now there's maybe like a little dip going on. Give it like a month or so and they'll remove the rainbow and they'll remove the the public sponsorship of supporting gay folks and it will dissipate. I I just find it funny that we are living in a world where our cancel culture lasts longer than our freaking like a week. If it does, then it's yay. Because I remember two years ago and I still get some messages about why our show is on Spotify. Why are you on Spotify? You're not supporting the artist community. And I'm like, show me a platform that gives me better reach than Spotify does. You may not like it. You may not understand it, but at the same time, um, there's not much out there. There's all these no ethical consumption under capitalism. No. And for all those people who are bitching and complaining, they're the ones on Twitter bitching and complaining that the rise of hate in our social media platforms are so huge. Well, you're literally adding to that by being on social media. So as I say to everyone, get the fuck off social media. If you really want to be a nice kumbaya fucking world where you're only talking to people in your echo chamber, get off social media and go do your own thing. That's what I do every day. Anyway. On to the last. Long, that was a long segue off. Yeah. It was. Off track. That's what we do best on this show because Why? No, we're not them. We're not Mike Nichols, the Oscar winner. And we're not the Chris Brown, the R&B singer. We're just two white gay guys, one from upstate New York and one from Calgary, Alberta, talking about the things that need to be talked about by two people who, one, doesn't have anything to do with the entertainment industry except this show. I want to turn to our last segment. And they, actually, no, I'm going to talk about this one because I want to throw you uh, a bone because I just took up about like 20 minutes of our time talking about how much I hate influencers. I want you to talk about Megan Trainer for a second. I hate her. You just want me to hate on somebody. That's what you want. You just want me to hate on somebody very publicly. Fine. I think that Megan Trainer. Uh, has heard a little bit of gay lingo and thinks that now she is like queen of the gays and has been making music specifically to like show off the three pieces of lingo that she knows. If I have to hear that goddamn mother song one more time, I'm going to literally letter bomb myself. Like, and I don't like, like she fully 
she's just a lot. And then she just went on her podcast with fucking also problematic Trisha Paytas and talked about like, fuck teachers, this fuck teachers that like, no, we're not about to do that, ma'am. Like, uh, uh-uh. like she is on thin fucking ice. I think, think her gay best friend, Chris, that she pays. Thank you. <laughs> is pushing the gay buttons in that in that oh a hundred percent because it's fucking working for him too oh for sure he had his little breakup him and his boyfriend had a whole tiktok thing together and they were like the it gay couple and then they broke up and then like now he's like latched on to megan trainer's coattails to great success good for him so let's turn to our last segment now because i let you rant for 10 minutes so i'm gonna just talk about two seconds um some new movie trailers have dropped recently. And I want to start with the first one. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Song and Winter Ice, or Song of Ballad and Bird. Bird and Crystal. Songbirds and Snakes. Songbirds and Snaggles. Um I watched the first 10 seconds and I went, wow, this is really bad. Besides Olivia Davis. I liked Olivia Davis for that like two seconds that she was on the screen that I saw her on. And then I was like, Olivia okay, Davis. Well, Vi- Vi- Viola Davis. Oh, Lord of mercy. Um, I read the book and the I'm casting- 90% sure I'm going to be canceled by the African-American community, the trans community, the right community, the fucking uh, Bud Light haters. Like I am spreading the love to cancel Chris Brown these days. <laughs> Oh, Lord have talk. mercy. Let's talk about the book. Lord have mercy. I read the book. I really liked the book. I really liked the trailer. I think casting is perfect for it. I think I'm really excited to see what they do with it because it it looks it, like I saw the casting like in every character, it was like perfect. Just perfect. I'm looking forward to it. I might oh, yeah. watch. No, I did. I don't even think I watched all three of the Hunger Game movies. Like, I think I watched half of some of them. Like, I just, I don't remember it that much. So but, maybe YA dystopian's not your thing. Which is weird, which it kind of is, though. If you listen, if you look at my bookshelf, you'd think, like, I'm a, as my husband would say, a 12 year old school, a Japanese school girl with all the stuff that I have on my shelf that is basically all YA stuff. But that's just me. Meanwhile, mine's all fairy porn and murder books. You have not read The Court of Roses and Thorns, a.k.a. fairy porn? No, no. Can't oh, say. Sarah J. Maas, <laughs> she knows how to write some... Ooh, chapter 55 in the second book. Mm. Mm. So Sorry. last and the last the other trailer that came out recently, which has caused the right to be pissed off that our woke agenda is being pushed into everyone's face, is Marvels the Marvels with uh Brie Larson and um uh Captain Marvel. Uh um oh my god, I can't even think of their names right now, Miss Marvel and I want to say Fantastic Rambo. I but I'm trying oh. to remember what her cat what her actual superhero name is. <laughs> so that came know. out i'm really looking forward to that i'm oh it really, looks so good it looks actually really like it looks like probably one of the better ones that they've done because marvel's been not batting a thousand these uh last few movies with their cgi uh shitting are you talking about modok because modok was a choice i'm talking about modok i'm talking about she hulk i'm talking about uh spider-man i'm talking about oh puppy Hi, puppy. You just wanted us to show your dog because I show my dogs all the time, don't you? Toby just came bounding up the stairs and was jumping on me, so he had to. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's one of the movies that it's actually been on my agenda to actually want to go see in the theater, so I'm looking forward to it. Oh! I know. Um, But besides that, there hasn't really been much else in the industry. There's been a few. The Barbie Barbie movie trailer came out. 
Uh, I think that's going to be a clusterfuck of epic proportions. I think I'm it's going to be Oscar bait, and I'm excited. I, I don't think it's going to be Oscar. Oscar. It's Greg what, Gerwig for... and Margot Robbie. Will Ferrell's in it, though. Okay. Michael Sarah is in it, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm very excited for Barbie. Um, I hope it is incredible. Um, and I have a feeling it's just going to be fun. I know it comes out the same weekend as Oppenheimer, but who cares? Oh, that's right. That's coming out soon, too. I'm looking forward to that. Same weekend. We're going to battle, and Barbie better fucking win. It Ain't nobody want to see Oppenheimer. Who? Ex- Open who? Man. Oppenheimer, isn't it? Catch me at the Barbie movie. Multiple times. So besides that, what else are you looking for, too? Uh, you're still busy, show. busy. You're still busy, 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 but I'm assuming you've got some downtime coming up. Yep, I'm taking my, I'm taking all the next week off, actually, specifically to go see shows in the city. Um, I have a list of about, we have a list of six that we're going to try and get to all six of them. And then if we can swing an extra day, we may try and catch eight shows. I'm really excited to see The Life of Pi with the puppets. We're going to see Grey House, which has Laurie Metcalf in it. My husband's finally going to see Parade, which has my arch nemesis, Ben Blatt. Um, but it's my fa- husband's favorite what, show. What what you do for love, eh? I know. It's apparently it's good. Uh, the, the soundtrack's fucking fire. So like I kind of, you know what? He put his whole Ben Platussy into it. Did Ben Platt's father uh, produce that show? Because I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why. He no, this finish. was a city center. Oh, okay. Good for him. Good. Actually, I mean, maybe his father is a part of city center, but like. The damage is done. Ben Platt is a staple. He's won a Tony. He's won the Drama Desk, which those nominations came out. Drama Desk, uh, Outer Critics. A lot of nominations for Broadway are coming out. Um, May 2nd is the Tony Awards nominations. Very May 2nd. So so maybe later on this month, while I'm going through treatments, you and I will just have an audio version of the show where we talk about that. Very excited. Hopefully I've seen everything that gets nominated so I can expertly judge. And hopefully things that I have not seen don't get nominated because then I have no shot of actually getting to see them because they're closed. And then I will just judge based on their names. And, and their we'll, synopsis. And well, you can read the reviews. Is. You can read the reviews too. Nope. And those are usually nope. a really good indicator. Nope. I'm going to read. I'm just going to judge based on their names. And that's it. I will judge a book by its cover, as they say. <laughs> um. <laughs> The big question is, does Bad Cinderella get nominated for costumes? If it does. It should. Ooh. Um, Does Some Like It Hot get nominations? Probably should it. Definitely not. Who played the characters? Uh, Christian Borel. It's still on. No big names on Broadway. That's what nobody you would know. Nobody has plebes out here in Calgary would know from you Broadway stars. Uh, Christian Borel's a pretty big name. Um okay. Yeah, no, doing that. I'm excited, excited to do a stint a stretch on Broadway and see a bunch of shit and take actual time off to, you know, function as a human, read through some books. And not worry about anything else but that. Yeah, fucking for real, yo. Um, I'm looking forward to this uh, coming Thursday, May 4th, where we are going to be releasing our interviews with uh, the voice actor, uh, um, Sarah, and I, pr- I pronounced her name wrong during the interview every single time, who played Ash Ketchum. Uh, we're going to be sitting down with the voice actor who played Wonder Woman and Superman. And then we're going to be sitting down with three local Calgarians who are voice actors in the uh, uh, entertainment industry. So be sure to check that out. It's going to be on YouTube and the No Not Them uh, 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 audio podcast channel. So be sure to check them out. And to those who are listening, because as I found out during our Calgary Expo, thank you. Thank you for actually downloading and streaming our show. It's always great when people walk up to you and say, you're that Chris Brown guy. Where's Michael? Which happened twice. That's my favorite part. Where's Michael? Which which happened twice. And uh, I'm not going to spoil anything quite soon, but we might see 
a potential appearance next year than from not just myself, but someone else at the Calgary Expo to potentially bring the show on the road and possibly interview some celebrities at Calgary Expo with a, a, a fellow podcast host, Mike Nichols, in it in attendance so be oh, sure i was gonna to... say it's toby it's my dog to yes toby <laughs> will be there toby plus my eight dogs will be there that will be our audience oh little toby would love that he likes to play oh and my dogs do too but michael always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat uh, about the entertainment industry i'm looking forward to the next month uh, if you want to, we can always chat about the Tony Awards because I know we did that la two years ago. Last year. Last year, we talked about that. So if you want to, I'm always up for a good chat with you because, you know, next month is going to be hell for me. So I'm always up for a little R&R &R and relaxation of sure. me not yelling into the void that is uh, the podcast world and social media. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. So with that, I want to remind everyone, he is Michael Nichols, the entertainment critic and theater all-star from upstate New York. And I am the world-renowned podcast host, according to his husband, Christopher Brown. And this is No, Not Them. <laughs>